He is one of the most popular and successful thriller writers. At the heart of his novels is history, especially real, little-known history, and his new book is no exception. International and New York Times bestselling author and philanthropist, Steve Barry is here to talk about the book, The Lost Order. And Steve, our uh, cameraman Chris over here has been fangirling it out since you've walked in the we've, building. We've had a very fruitful conversation yes. on the books. Yes, he is. Uh, he loves the books. He's only on book three. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to try to give up too, uh, too much information mm -hmm. for him. He's not quite there. But I did say you really love history one, but kind of little known history. Is that kind of why this book uh, has a little bit of the uh, Golden Knights in it? Yeah, I want something that you don't know a lot about, yeah. but, I, but I'm hoping you're going to want to know more about it. And this new book deals with the largest, most dangerous, subversive organization in American history, and it actually existed called the Knights of the Golden Circle. And it's, um, it was fascinating. It existed before the Civil War, during the Civil War, and then after the Civil War. And some say it might even still be around in some form or another. And uh, it, was, it, it fascinated me. They, uh, they have a treasure associated with them that's real, that people have searched for for decades, and Cotton Malone's going to go after it. Now, the treasure, mm -hmm. uh, is, it, is it somewhere also up for debate if there's still treasure out there? I don't think it's up for debate that it's out there. The question is, where is it out there? Okay. What they did is they stole. They stole gold yeah. and silver from all kinds of places, even from a, a federal mint. And they hid it around the country in the woods, out in the forest. And they left markers in the woods of how to find it. And people have actually searched and found small caches of this. Wow. They have not found the large ones because interpreting their symbols is tough. Yeah. And I came across that, that whole concept, and so I incorporated it in there. So there is actually a treasure out there somewhere around. And by the way, some say uh, the, the largest mm -hmm. concentration of treasure may have been moved to this area. Wow. May very well have been moved into New Mexico or Arizona. Yeah. And the climax of this book takes place in New Mexico. Wow. And I know you have traveled uh, to many places, uh, whether just personally or on research for the book. Yes. And this book's no exception. Yeah. Book, Arkansas is in the novel. We were there. Uh, Washington, D.C. has a lot of locales in this book. Uh, and we try to go to most of the places that are in the novels, yes. Now, we're going to learn a lot about everything we were just talking about in this book. We're also going to learn something else in this book that I, I know a lot of your fans have been waiting for, but we're not going to give it totally away because book isn't there. But we uh, also get a revelation about Cotton and maybe his name. Yeah, he has a southern name. I didn't name Cotton that in the beginning. Yeah. I he had another name, and in my writer's group, I took the name I had one night, and I did it, and one of the ladies in the group said it was the stupidest name she ever heard in her life. <laughs> So I said, well, what do you want to call him? And she said, let's call him Cotton. I said, great, that's wonderful. Yeah. But that, and so he became Cotton Malone. And, and in the novels, it's always a uh, long story. Mm -hmm. How did you get that name? Long story, long story. Well, I came across how he got his name yeah. a few years ago when I was reading something. And I've held it to this novel. And I've decided that now it is a long story. It took the whole book to explain it. And it's an interesting, uh, it's real. What, what you're gonna what you're gonna hear about how Cotton got his name is from a real life character. I think that's gonna be very interesting for a lot of your fans. Like mm -hmm. you said, long story, long story. Now it's time to, uh, to mm -hmm. kind of give that long story. Yes. Um, and on a kind of like a, a real life, also within the books, I know you're also here um, in Arizona having to do with uh, Smithmo Smithsonian and the libraries and everything. Tell me about all the ties with that. I serve on the Smithsonian Libraries Advisory Board. A lot of people don't realize it, but every Smithsonian institution has a library associated with it. When you go into American history or natural history or air and space museum, there's a library in there. And that library is the heart of that institution. It's where all the information is. And everything radiates from that. And I serve on the advisory board and we are, we, we sort of oversee and, and keep those things yeah. open, those doors open. And it's, it's fascinating. It's one of the largest repositories of knowledge in the world. I've been wanting to put Cotton's uh, into that world, and I got him into the Smithsonian. We're going to launch this book the night of April the 4th at the Smithsonian Castle. Uh, 50 people are paying $1,000 a piece to come and they're gonna get a private tour with, wow. for me and the curator. We're gonna see all the things from the novel, the secret staircases, the, the tunnel underneath the castle. There's actually a, a mistake on James Smithson's tomb, which oh. is very interesting. It's all kinds of things we're gonna see. We're gonna see this key up in the rotunda that figures into the novel that was found in the attic in the 1950s. All of that is in, in the novel. Uh, if anybody's interested in going, there's still three tickets left. Yeah. And you can go to my website, steveberry.org, and go to the events section 
auction and you can find out how you could get those three. There's three tickets left and we're going to have a good time that night. You'll get a cop free copy of the book too. Wow, what a uh, once in a lifetime experience that'll be. And I know we keep saying April 4th, Steve, but I'm going to remind everyone how they can actually pre-order today right away. That's but good. this has been an honor to sit Thank down you for having me. Thank you. Now, as we were saying, you can pre-order The Lost Order on Amazon.com before the release date on April 4th. To learn more, visit, as we were saying, steveberry.org.